Music critics have long been public enemy number one to the music fan. And as someone who's been talking about music online in a critical sense since 2009, I think music critics kind of suck. Hey neighbor, my name is John and this is The Think Tank, the series where I take something that's been on my mind in the world of music and then I turn it into a video discussion. And today's topic is why music critics seem to be trending in a very disturbing direction. As much as people want to pretend that music criticism is not an expressive art form, it is. There's emotion and hopefully sincerity behind where the person writing it or filming it is coming from. Listening to a critic tear into something you love probably feels like Godzilla stomping through a city causing mass mayhem and destruction to your heart. It's probably not a super fun time, but there's been many occasions where I found myself wanting to reach through the screen and shake whoever I'm reading or watching and say, where the hell did that take come from? But I have to remember and look in the mirror and say, for every time that I've felt that, there's probably a dozen times for anyone watching this video right now where you've wanted to do the exact same thing to me for a take that I've had. Realistically, most of the time, this is a good thing. It means that disagreement and discourse are allowed because if discourse is dead, then I feel like art is dead because if art doesn't have some sort of pushback or something to keep pushing it forward, then everything crumbles and everybody gets content to stay exactly where they are. Taking criticism or praise isn't easy, and I say that as somebody who's looked back and cringed at the way that I've handled or responded to criticism in years past, especially before I got off Twitter. But the idea of the music critic or the music critic versus the fan, what that is or what that relationship or dynamic should be, isn't really what the focal point of this video is. I've noticed this disturbing trend over the past past five years or so where it feels like critics are so scared to criticize much of anything. I have talked about this a little bit before, but I don't think I really brought evidence to the table that solidified what I was trying to say. The idea of there being this global warming for critics. Everything is going higher and higher. The scores, the temperatures, they're becoming scorching, and every new album seems to score even better than the last, even if the album itself is objectively nowhere near surpassing the past material. With art being so subjective, it's obviously heavily debatable if the quality of albums is actually going up or sinking, but the trend that I'm noticing is that for pretty much every band or artist that you'll look up on Metacritic, Think of it like a Rotten Tomatoes. It's an aggregate where it puts all the professional critic scores into one and then shoots out an out of 100 score. That score keeps rising and rising and rising. And I'm talking artists like the 1975, Charlie Puth, Fall Out Boy. Every album, according to the critic scores, is getting so much better over time. Fall Out Boy's So Much for Stardust got a 79 out of 100 on the collective scale, which is just two points away from indicating universal acclaim. I wasn't huge on the album, but fine. It feels like critics and fans kind of agreed on this one. But wait a minute. 79, that seems kind of high for Fall Out Boy. We go over to their Metacritic profile, and it turns out it's the best score that they've ever gotten, meaning that this, apparently according to critics, is a better album than Fully Ado, Save Rock and Roll, Infinity on High, and the whole pack. You might see Mania is a wrench in the gears for my theory. Wow, a 59 out of 100. That seems like uh, they didn't exactly think that was better than their past albums. But my theory also includes the idea that if the general pushback in consensus from fans and just from people at large, whether that be in the echo chamber that is Twitter or some other social media, if the pushback and the criticism against an album or a project is loud, the critics will generally jump on board too and somebody ends up catching a stray. There's still a small swimming pool left of artists and albums that are okay to criticize apparently and it's just an agreed upon thing. Charlie Poo Mania by Fall Out Boy, Imagine Dragons' in discography. These are all people that it feels like there's open season. Just the critics get to tee off and take out all of their pent-up anger. Just look what happened to Monoskin with their album Rush this year and what Pitchfork did to that. Like, my god, I know the album was kind of mid, at least in places, but you would think that the entire
entire band took turns taking Italian shits in the critics' coffee. I mentioned Charlie Puth, so I looked up Nine Track Mind, and I see that it's got a 37 from critics. 37 out of 100, one of the lowest scores ever on Metacritic. And that was only seven years ago. Charlie's definitely improved as a musician, but we went from 37 to, for voice notes, a few years after that, 2018, 67, and then last year, for Charlie, an 81, universal acclaim. This is exactly what I'm talking about. 37 to 67 to 81. Critics just uh, bending over backwards to praise an artist that just a few years ago, they were criticizing and raking over the coals. The 1975 also sprang to mind because they put out their seminal album that most agree is their masterpiece in 2016, and it got a 75, which makes sense for the 1975. But over on their profile, you might notice that being funny in a foreign language has an 82. And what do you know? Ding, ding, ding. That's their most recent. I just noticed that they have a very fitting average career score of 75. The trend here is not entirely sequential because Notes on a Conditional Form came out and that album was pretty heavily derided or at the very least divisive, polarizing, and it scored a 69. But 83 for a brief inquiry, being funny in a foreign language at an 82. And I like it when you sleep in the 1975 Five, apparently ranking is some of their worst albums? The trend continues and bleeds over to other artists. Just look at Deftones. We see everything repeating with Gore from 2016 scoring over the likes of Diamond Eyes, White Pony, the self-titled and Saturday Night Wrist, which is certainly an interesting take. The critics are now speaking in their native tongue, showing their true colors with another band, Paramore. We rank by Metascore and we quite literally see it go backwards in time. This is why, 85, After Laughter, 82, the self-titled 81, Brand New Eyes 73, and a 67 for Riot. If we're looking at this like Paramore's SAT, then Brand New Eyes scored 12 points lower than This Is Why, and Riot, their album that to some is their magnum opus, scored almost 20 points lower? What crack are we smoking? To my jury of peers, if you'll allow it, I want to present one more piece of evidence that should make this an open, shut case in the case of global warming for music critics. I give you Harry Styles' debut album, his self-titled, which is still personally my favorite, but I can see that maybe it's not objectively his best. But still, a 68 is a pretty lukewarm score. Based on a couple dozen reviews from professional critics, we move over to his profile, keeping that in mind. A 68 to, if we sort by Metacritic score, Harry's House is his best album by a landslide with an 83, Fine Line at a 76, and Harry Styles with a 68. I don't want to sit here and lecture you like I know best on which album is actually the best of an artist's career because, again, that's up to you. That's up to the fan or the critic to say, I like this, I don't like this, I'm somewhere in between. What scares me is that everyone is too afraid to say anything about anything out of fear of getting attacked by stance. And that is definitely a problem on the fandom side of the fence, but also to everybody else not pushing back over time, it creates this echo chamber where we're only allowed to say positive things or else we're downvoted into oblivion. Think it over, then let me know your perspective on this global warming of music critics in the comments below. Be sure to hit that like button, check out more of the Think Tank on screen, follow me on Instagram for even more music takes, and I'll be back.